Booster 7 is on the orbital launch mount at Boca Chica, ahead of the first ever booster engine firings on the pad. Will Booster 7 even survive this rigorous and unprecedented test campaign? We'll dive into what we expect these tests to look like, how SpaceX is mitigating the risk, and more. I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, updating you on the never-ending activities at SpaceX Boca Chica. SpaceX is gearing up for the first static fires of a booster on the orbital launch mount. This booster, Booster 7, was rolled out and lifted onto the mount on June 23rd. This lift was notable because it was the first time a booster was lifted onto the mount using the chopsticks. The vehicle has since undergone several tests, including a Raptor igniter test and cryogenic testing. Based on previous test schedules, it's expected that the next up will be a pre-burner test. Now this test, or perhaps tests, will see the two pre-burners on each Raptor engine be quickly ignited, while its main chamber is not ignited. This is an interesting event, as it produces a large cloud of burning methane. It'll be hard to miss. And if all goes well with pre-burner testing, the next event should be the big one, the static fire test campaign. Now, it's not entirely clear how many engines will be fired at first, or even how many firing tests there will be. It would make sense for SpaceX to take a slow approach and only fire a few engines at first before slowly moving up to all 33. And it is also important to remember that this will be the first ever time SpaceX attempts to fire engines on the orbital launch mount, as well as the first booster static fire since Booster 3. Remember Booster 3? But anyway, given all this information, it would not be surprising to see tests get scrubbed. This is, after all, just one big test campaign. No matter how many attempts it will take, it will be super interesting to see all 33 engines ignite for the first time. Will the booster survive? Will the pad survive? Or will everything just go perfectly? Well, it seems that SpaceX is approaching this monumental task methodically, with the cryo tests, followed by the igniter tests, followed by pre-burner tests, they're being careful with Booster 7. You don't want to damage your launch pad on the first major test. There is risk in any kind of first test, but given that SpaceX is going relatively slow here, it seems that the risk will be minimized. But of course, minimize does not equal zero, and there's always a chance something will go wrong. But be sure to follow Mary on Twitter, at Boca Chica Gal, as she'll receive an overpressure notice the day before any static fire or pre-burner tests. That'll signify an engine test is soon. We can't wait to share these tests with you. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss a live stream. But Booster 7 wasn't the only vehicle undergoing testing recently. B7.1, a booster simulating test tank, underwent structural testing on June 28th. This tank is made out of a booster forward and aft dome and was installed on the structural test stand, lovingly nicknamed the Can Crusher. This stand uses strong ropes and hydraulic cylinders to apply compression forces on the tank, simulating the forces of launch. The test seemed to be at least somewhat successful as the tank survived in one piece. Now currently, B7.1 resides at the launch site, awaiting either further testing or a move back to the production site. Also at the test site is an exciting piece of new hardware, the E-Dome tank. E-Dome, which stands for elliptical dome, is demonstrating new flatter tank domes for ships and boosters. These domes are simpler than the existing ones, only being made of one kind of steel piece. They're also flatter, meaning that the tanks can have a higher volume for propellants without sacrificing payload space. The E-Dome tank has not undergone testing yet, but it may be up next after B7.1. And finally, one vehicle has left the launch site. Booster 4, which was originally intended to fly the orbital test flight, has been moved back to the production site, where it currently resides in the rocket garden. While it's on display for now, there's always a possibility of it being scrapped later down the line. And speaking of the production site, that area is equally buzzing with activity. Ship 24 is currently inside the high bay, as final work is being performed on it ahead of its final test campaign. It is expected to roll back out to the suborbital launch site in the near future to undergo static firing of its six Raptor engines. 
Ship 24 will fly atop Booster 7, and should all go well, will deploy the first Starlink 2.0 satellites into orbit. And speaking of those satellites, the Starlink loader was test lifted on June 30th. This device, lifted up by the high bay bridge crane, will load the so-called PEZ dispenser inside Ship 24 with Starlink satellites. None of these satellites have been spotted around the site yet, although that is not surprising given the semi-secretive nature of the Starlink program in general. Just next door, in the still under construction mega bay, Booster 5 is being scrapped. This booster, of a similar outdated design to Booster 4, was assembled late last year as a production pathfinder, and moved to the rocket garden for storage. It is now being scrapped, likely to save room. And speaking of the mega bay, this new assembly building has finally received its roof. There's now a large open space at the top of the building, and it looks like there's enough space for two floors. It's not clear what will be put up there, but give us your best guesses in the comments. Maybe another bar? Maybe mission control? Or just some extra workspace? Let us know what you think. One interesting thing to note is that it seems that work on future vehicles has slowed dramatically. Booster 8 still remains in two pieces, and Booster 9 stacking has not begun yet, although parts for it have been spotted around the build site. Ship 25, on the other hand, is slowly being worked on. It had its own Starlink deployer, or PEZ dispenser, installed on June 22nd, but not much else has happened with the ship. Ship 25 and Booster 8 are expected to be the next pairing of orbit-ready vehicles. This slow pace of assembly may be due to SpaceX not wanting to complete the vehicles before Booster 7 and Ship 24 complete their test campaigns, or maybe even fly. If a major flaw is discovered during those tests, it would be a real shame to have to completely scrap a set of finished flight vehicles. And while we're discussing building vehicles, let's check in on the Star Factory, which will be a permanent factory for building Starship rings, nose cones, and other components. It is expected to expand over time, replacing the existing temporary tents. The first portion of the structure is coming along quickly, with walls and roofing beginning to go up, as well as interior stairs. Now, there's no exact timeline as to when construction will be finished, but it wouldn't be shocking to see the shell of the building be done in the next few months. And that's all for this video. If you'd like to support the work we do on our channel, and get something cool to wear or display, check out our merch store, shop.nasaspaceflight.com. We have tons of items available from shirts, to photo prints, to mugs, and more. And be sure to stay subscribed so you don't miss our Booster 7 testing live streams. And also, check out our daily videos from Boca Chica so you don't miss out on any action down at Starbase. Thanks for watching, have a great week.